Okay, this is Professor Billier from Worcester Polytechnic Institute talking about uniaxial testing uh, using the Blue Hill 3 software for the Instron 5544 machine. Uh, in the last 10 minute video, I talked about the uh, specimen type measurements and test control, and now I'd like to talk about uh, programming the graphics and cal uh, calculations and uh, customizing it a bit more. So if we go under method, we've gone through all of these but very quickly. Um, I'd like to now go into measurements a bit more. So again, these are physical measurements um, or virtual measurements, and we can do calculations with those. For example, if we want to know what the ultimate tensile strength of uh, the sample is, we would want to do at maximum load. You can see here the maximum load recorded. There's a nice little picture of it. At maximum load, and then I can decide later when I'm under the workspace or uh, results, I can decide what I want to calculate at maximum load, such as maximum stress at maximum load, or just actually the maximum load. Likewise, I could uh, do break. So if a sample uh, goes and then over a certain amount of time, there's a rapid drop it'll actually calculate the breakpoint. Now, it won't calculate it right at the bottom. It'll calculate at the top if you want to know what is the load at break, let's say. And we can define it in different ways. Um, percent of maximum load. So you can play with these and figure out different ways. And the nice thing is they give you a little picture to show you uh, of how it's being calculated. So. I use the standard ones now, but again, you just have to go and look in here and read the help menu to determine, uh, and help is always up here with this question mark for how to actually do exactly is defining. And you need to know how they're defined if you're going to use them. Now, in my courses, we use MATLAB to analyze the raw data, and then you'll know exactly how you define all of these. But it's nice to use the computer to do it also. It's a very powerful software. So another one uh, for doing a tensile test, uh, the generally you're going to want to know what the slope is or what the modulus of the material is and that can be defined in many different ways. Um, Instron uses an e-modulus measure uh, calculate sort of like a best fit of the whole line. Uh, you could also do an automatic Young's and uh, it doesn't show a short picture uh, it'll go along the entire um, so there's different ways of how it calculates the e-modulus um, such as it can do the e-modulus and calculate segment uh, the chord, the uh, tangent modulus. Okay, um, so there's different different de definitions of how you would want to calculate your modulus, and you just have to know how the um, computer is doing it. I'll leave it for now under automatic e modulus, but as you could uh, as you could tell, the uh, depending on how you calculate it, this is going to be more of an average instead of the maximum modulus. Can calculate yield, um, and again, it can calculate yield in many ways. In this case, the standard one is where it's zero slope, but that's how I would calculate the maximum for that a leather sample I'm testing. So I would rather use something like a slope threshold or offset. So here's a standard way of doing uh, plastics Let's show that again. The offset method moves it over a little bit, calculates uh, a line that's parallel to the, uh, the, the region that is linear, and when it crosses, the curve crosses that line after a certain offset, which you can select, it'll calculate the yield. I'm mostly focused on the maximum load and um, the modulus. So I can actually remove the other ones if I don't want to um, calculate them. You can select your rounding and such also. Test control we've set up um, already in the last video, so I'm not going to get into that. Um, and we already looked at the console. So I want to focus on the workspace. The user can enter the dimensions of the sample for each specimen, the label, what they want to call it, the rate of testing, and even a comment there. But what is being shown in the results table, you can also choose. I like to go down to layout here and select what my layout's going to be first. Um, I'd like to do a two graph layout 
So the uh, plot on the top and the bottom, and then my calculations uh, result table on the right. So what will go in my results table? Uh, specimen label that I typed in, the maximum load, and that's being calculated. It's the maximum load being calculated at the maximum load. You could also calculate the tensile stress at the maximum load. And you can bring these over, um, and you could be calculating maximum extension also at maximum load, which is already there. Um, and you could be calculating, uh, you could put in number inputs. So if I wanted to have in here also not just a specimen label, but also the dimensions that I put in there, I could do the length of my sample, the thickness of my sample, and the width of my sample. And I can bring those up after my specimen label. If I'd like to have them there, and I can specify the number of the uh, significant digits, such as millimeters time with five decimal places is not uh, realistic. Uh, my micrometer only goes to three decimal places uh, to microns anyway. So that goes for the thickness also and the length as well, and probably not even that accurate. And the maximum load. It's a 2,000 newton load cell. At best, you need to put one uh, decimal place there. It's actually not accurate underneath uh, about two or, or even not even about five newtons. So you can also have statistics being calculated, um, mean, standard deviation. There's a lot of things being calculated here. Maximum, mean, plus too many things here. And that'll be calculated when you do a multiple tests, it'll calculate automatically for you the uh, these values, these descri descriptive statistics of your samples. Then you can have a separate graph um, or results table. I'm not going to get into now, but just like you did the first one, you can have a separate table. I like to say, uh, have two graphs as I mentioned. The first graph, I'd like to have, instead of load versus extension, I'd like to have a double y-axis. Like to have load and extension, and for some reason it uses red and dark red. Um, so now I have load and load. Now I want to say, well, my x data, I don't want extension, I want time. And on my y data, I have load, but I don't want load and load, I want load and extension. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, I don't like having two red lines, so plot two, I will make blue color so they can see the difference between those two. So my extension is now going to be blue. Graph 2, now I do like load and extension, but I actually want to calculate instead of extension, I'd like strain. And I'd like to have it in uh, percentage. And then instead of load, I'd like stress. So I can make my stress strain plot right there. And you can do automatic scaling or manual scaling. Now, um, this will be plotting. I'll have it up to four curves per graph. You can raise up to 10 or as many as you want. And then uh, they automatically will have uh, the default is to have an offset between curves. So even though this red curve and the second curve um, might be very similar, it offsets them so you can see it. I actually don't like that. So I want them, if they all look the same, I want them to lie on each other, which they generally don't with biological tissues anyway. And I can have it um, um, show different uh, average curves or others. I failed to mention when doing the uh, calculations, you can actually have them show on the graph too. So when I do the calculation, for example, of setting up the maximum load, if I want to show that on my graph, I can click this here, indicate on graph. And then, just like the modulus, I want to actually show it on my graph. I want to indicate that on my graph also. So after the test, you'll see a nice line there. So that's most of the um, workspace. Now I have to get down to what the data that I actually want to be um, recording and outputting. So time extension load are just three standards you definitely always want. You could have calculated values also, such as strain and stress. Those are pretty uh, common. Now, um, I suggest you calculate those on your own as well. 
And again, we could have time to five decimal places is excessive, milliseconds at most. Uh, extension, again, is below the resolution. There's uh, too many decimal places for the resolution of the machine. Five decimal places for um, Newtons is way beyond what the machine can do. And so you can change those just to make it look better. When it, and you can have a format of the of the raw data that's going to be output. Um, with this new Blue Hill 3, you can also have live displays uh, on other places on your page on your screen, such as you could have the tensile strain or stress or something showing up somewhere else on your screen if you wanted. And again, we already did a layout. You could have, instead of uh, the two graphs, you could have multiple uh, other types of uh, outputs. Now it's important to get your data, so you want to know where you save it to, and you can choose you can choose a sample name and also where it's going to be saved to. Uh, I would suggest saving it to your documents. Now you could also save it instead of to your documents, uh, which then you have to copy it from there and save it onto your server. You could have it saved directly to your network server, such as my documents on storage, and you can put them in some type of uh, file place. But I'm going to go back to putting them into just my documents. I'll put it under the course name I'm working on here. So that's where all the files should be saved. There are three different file types you're going to get out of here. One, I don't want to print, I'm not attached to a printer. One is just a PDF report, and you can select what goes into that report. I'm not going to go into it here. That's a whole other uh, lecture. Uh, and also, I'll have it save the PDF of that, and that shows me the, the graphs. I'll have it export the results. Now, this is your results table that you created, and you can also select other um, things to export. But uh, we want it just to, to uh, so you can select anything you want it to put into a table, uh, parameters, and it can put results and statistics. I'll have it do only the results. And I want to export um, the raw data, which is again was my time, force, and extension, uh, and also calculated parameters such as stress and strain. Um, now here, that's the data that's already going to be exported, but I can have other things such as a header on the top that will say, oh, um, just because I have force displacement and extension uh, and f and time, I would also like to know well what what was my length, the label, what's it called, what's the thickness, what's the width of my sample. I want that all listed at the top of the sample of the file with my raw data, so I could go back and recalculate my stress and strain off of it. Uh, I may also want to test. Uh, have it uh, put in how fast I tested it. So my test, I did at a certain rate. I want to know what rate I did it at and have that recorded on my file. Now we talked before about what kind of prompts we have. Um, so now I'm ready, I believe, to start my test. So I've already put a leather sample in and I've already balanced my load cell before that, um, but now I need to put a preload on sample a few newtons and I need to zero my extension which I can do here or over here I don't want to zero my force again because that's my preload uh, I can measure the dimensions here using calipers I already know what those dimensions are approximately my safety shield on, make sure my safety stops are in place so my grips can't touch each other. And I'm going to do this at 20 millimeters per minute again. That's approximately the width. Thickness here is thinner and the length is about 28 millimeters. And I can do my run. And while I'm testing, I can look at either of these graphs. This is my stress strain graph, and here's my load. I've already done one sample before. I usually like to look at this graph right here, my extension in blue, and my load in red. It 
seems to be breaking. Since it's leather, unlike plastics or metals, it doesn't necessarily break catastrophically. It's ripping out. So my my limit of a 40% rate drop um, doesn't actually make it stop, so I can stop it manually. And I can return to zero extension. And then I can look at my data by pushing this little thing here. I can go look at my data. And this second specimen had a lower stress than the first piece of leather I did. Uh, and it failed a little bit differently. And it shows on the graph where my peak is. I can also look at my results table. Um, because the, the sample didn't uh, end on its own successfully, it has not calculated the E modulus. And again, that's why we saved the raw data. We can go calculate the slope of that curve ourselves. Um, I didn't name that sample, um, so it doesn't have anything written there. Uh, I have my dimensions, my max loads, maximum stress, and strain at, uh, at the maximum calculated. Again, you can calculate many more things. Then I go next to calculate my, to start my next sample. Now to get the data out, I actually have to finish the sample. It will not write the raw data file unless I hit finish. Finish the sample. And I do not want to start another sample. My test method has changed. I say yes, I'd like to, to rename it. And I want to rename this method to my name. Uh, I called the last one. I'll call the attention method. Uh, the, I'll call it a tensile test. I can use that again. So next time I want to test leather in the same way, I can go back and just use that. Now if I don't want to, uh, if I want to use the exact same method, and someone might have changed this method later, I can just continue the sample and they'll be graphed on the same graphs, which you can play with that yourself. So I, I say continue sample, I can test more leather and it'll be as if I never I even turned off the computer. If I just say create new ones, I can take new data, but it won't be saved in the same file. The test method that I use for these samples, even if I change this tensile, leather tensile test to um, later on, if I go back and do continue sample, the test method that I use today will be saved with the data and I can reuse, even if someone has deleted that file off the computer. And that's the end of this uh, small video about how to do a tensile test on leather.